This is Stanley McGorkle, a man with a great stake in America's oil industry. Not just to keep his razor humming, either. Stanley, like all of us, lives in a world which depends on oil and oil products. Oil is essential to the farm machinery which harvests Stanley's food, and the trucks which bring it to market. The diesel trains which carry the commerce of the nation and the planes which carry Stanley's mail depend on oil. Oil power ships plying the sea lanes to and from ports all over the world. Oil supplies power and lubrication for a multitude of America's industries. It is the lifeblood of national defense, helping to protect the freedom of all Americans, including Stanley McGorkle. Which, by the way, brings up the thought of what it might be like if the McGorkle family had to do without oil. No lubrication. No electric shave. If they are made from oil products. No toothbrushes. No cosmetics. No nylons. Without oil for the furnace, Everything in the house gets the shivers and shakes. Little Oswald's plastic spaceship may be made from an oil product. The wheels on Brother Lorenzo's scooter add their clattering complaint for oil, like every other wheel in the house. The paint on Stanley's house may have an oil-based thinner. Without oil-based weed killers, the lawn looks like a place for Stanley to meet Livingston. Of course, there are other kinds of weed killers, but they need oil too. Oh well, he can always take a little drive to get away from it all. Or can he? Without oil, there would be no asphalt road. No gasoline for fuel. No cold rubber tires. As a matter of fact, no motor. And if the fabric in Stanley's pants is made from oil products, look out, brother. Of course, other items of apparel might be made from oil products, too. No doubt about it, Stanley and all of us have quite a stake in an ample supply of oil. Now, just where does oil come from? It doesn't grow in those little cans. Or even in those huge storage tanks. Some people think oil flows underground like a river. It doesn't. Others think it lies in deep pools just waiting to be tapped. Wrong again. Instead, isolated by faults and wrinkles in the Earth's crust, trapped beneath layers of rock, packed under tremendous pressures in sands and porous limestone, usually mixed with gas, we find the liquid of modern man's progress. This is oil. 
and this is an oil well. Now, contrary to some beliefs, the oil well is nothing like a water well. The oil operator can't keep on dipping out oil indefinitely for one very important reason. It would have to rain oil to replenish the underground supply. And unfortunately, it never rains oil. When an oil deposit is used up, like an ice cream soda, that's all there is. There isn't any more. And all oil wells go dry eventually. So the big problem is to keep enough new wells being drilled to replace the ones that dry up. Each year, the oil industry spends hundreds of millions of dollars in its search for nature's miracle liquid. First, operators must have the money to employ the latest scientific methods and instruments to help them locate possible oil-bearing formations. This equipment might be regarded as the bloodhound of the oil industry. If a property looks good, the operator must invest in leases and pay annual rentals, and then spend more money to prepare drilling locations. It takes still more money to purchase expensive tools and equipment, and to pay the skilled labor that builds the derricks and drills for oil. Once drilling starts, costs mount rapidly. A 5,000-foot well may cost more than $50,000. A 10,000-foot well may cost over $200,000. And a 15 to 20,000-foot well may cost $500,000 to a million dollars or more. Most shallow fields have already been discovered, so deep drilling is standard practice today. Of course, where wells are more difficult to drill, their costs may run into several millions. But in spite of the money and effort spent on a well, there is still no guarantee that oil will be found by the slender tube boring beneath the Earth's surface. And unfortunately, it costs just as much to drill a dry hole as it does a producing well. Now, what are the operator's odds on finding any oil at all in exploratory drilling? One in nine. His chance of breaking even on his investment is one in 44 and his chance of hitting the jackpot, the discovery of a major oil field, is one in 991. Yet this operator and thousands like him keep on drilling for oil. Why? Well, it wasn't always this way. He refused to knuckle under. He liked his independence and he wanted to be free. But they told him to be loyal to a land across the sea. So he wrote a declaration, then defied them all. He oiled his gun and waited for the trumpet to call. That's what it takes to make a country strong. A man on the land who knows the right from the wrong. There were scoffers in America, too. Hey, why do you want independence? Why don't you just do what they tell you? The man at Concord chose independence. He fought and won. It was his land and worth fighting for. A land with a promise. For many a farmer, the promise led him off over the horizon. He kept pushing the boundaries westward as population increased. More people meant more mouths to feed, more land to feed them. The farmer needed more power horsepower, horse-drawn machinery. Still, it wasn't enough. He doubled, tripled, quadrupled the horsepower until feeding his work animals took a large part of his land, labor, and time. His whole life was a race against time. At the end of the day, his energy was totally used he had to find another source of power. As always, the scoffer was on hand. Ha, oh, who ever heard of plowing that way? Ow. Don't you know when you lick? Still, the farmer kept trying. So did others. 
the patent office was bombarded with schemes and devices. <laughs> oh, world's, world's full of lunatics. You take those fellas over in Pennsylvania, punch in a hole in the ground to get oil. Well, what good is it? You can burn it in a lamp, but that's all. Oh, oh, oh. They, think, they think that thing will run on oil? Huh. Probably tell you next, they'll put wheels on it and make it go. Suppose they think it'll pull a plow. It'll never work. The whole idea will blow up sky high. Wrong again. Here, blowing sky high was power to revolutionize man's way of life. For the farmer, power to run the tractor, outperforming any number of work animals. And no crops required to feed it. A nationwide race began to meet the demand for oil. North, south, east. West, they searched the country round, wherever liquid power was hidden underground. Power enough for every need, power enough to advance, power enough to build a future brighter than the past. Hundreds of companies were formed, little and big, all competing for a share of the business. Machine manufacturers were also in competition to build cheaper, more efficient tractors and other kinds of farm machinery. Petroleum-powered vehicles of all sorts, trucks to haul farm products to market on roads converted from dust to asphalt by petroleum. As farms became more mechanized, more and more farm products flowed to market. Farmers cultivated many times more land, raised many times more crops per man acre than ever before. And over the years, everyone has shared in the benefits. For progress is a stepping stone to a better life. And everyone can share it with the farmer and his wife. There's time to relax, to get around, and once more, time to do a better job than ever before. Yes, time to keep up with the latest information from the county agent and land-grant colleges. The wide-awake farmer keeps improving his crops and stock. For there's keen rivalry among farmers. Each year they supply the public with better products. And they demand the same from the industries that supply them. More and better insecticides, weed killers, fertilizers. Better lubricants to protect machinery against the wear and tear of friction. And continually better fuels. The demand for oil products keeps increasing. There are always scoffers. Uh-uh. You're heading for trouble. Pretty soon there won't be any oil left. Wrong again. New techniques are even bringing old wells back to life. New fields are being opened up all over the world. New drilling methods to tap oil pools miles underground. Better refining. New techniques to conserve every drop of oil. As it has in the past, America's oil industry, made up of thousands of privately managed competing companies, will continue to supply the power we need. Power for the farmer to accomplish a job that's now worldwide in scope. For today, American food reaches half the seaports of the world, helping those nations whose future is linked with our own. The American farmer has come a long way in his struggle to make the land and nature work for him. But tomorrow promises even greater abundance. Abundance created by the free American man on the land in partnership with American industry and its power. Together, they will work to ensure our strength and preserve our climate of freedom. You cultivate your freedom like you cultivate your land. You guard against its enemies on each and every hand. You keep yourself awake and you're ready to fight. To sacrifice the things you have for what you know is right. 
That's what it takes to make a country strong. A man on the land who knows the right from the wrong.